welcome to my vegan kitchen i'm michelle this is the video you guys have been waiting for i'm going to show you three recipes with jackfruit yes your favorite jack is back come with me i'm going to do it now <laughs> Yes, guys, Jack is back, my man, yes. So you guys are always asking me for jackfruit recipes. I got three of them for you. Three really good, really absolutely delicious recipes. I know if you've never tried jack jackfruit before, this is it. All right, so I got me a can of jackfruit and I'll tell you a little story. So my usual jackfruit I usually purchase because a lot of you guys ask, where can I buy jackfruit, right? And I'm always telling you guys, Trader Joe's, or the farmer's market, Asian markets, they'll have jackfruit. I usually buy it from Trader Joe's. They have discontinued the brand that I love. Yeah, boo-hoo. They throw a little bit down for the homies. But now I went to Whole Foods and I got this jackfruit, which I noticed um, in the can, it's actually in lime. It's, it's, it's not a brine, so it doesn't have that briny taste. So we don't have to worry about cooking it and getting rid of the brine. We're just gonna rinse it in some regular warm or hot tap water. So let's bust this can open. Strain off the water. So just dump out your jackfruit. And let me show you guys. Let me, let me get over here and show you what this looks like. So again, for those of you who've never seen what jackfruit looks like, this is what it looks like. It is a fruit, but it has those fibers that when it's cooked, the fibers mimic meat. So it's great for like pulled pork or chicken, anything that you're gonna need that, that chicken-like texture for. And guys, this is young green jackfruit. So I know I get in the comments sometimes, they're like, how does that taste? Is it sweet? It's not sweet. Young jackfruit really doesn't have a taste. Once it ripens, it will be sweet, like a sweet fruit. So we're just gonna rinse this off in some water, All right, guys. So once I have rinsed it under water, under really hot water, I'm just gonna put it here on the side because I still need to drain out the water and eventually I'm gonna squeeze out as much water as I can get out of that jackfruit. In the meantime though, let's do this. Half of an onion, I have one that I already started. We're just gonna dice up half of an onion. So now I'm gonna squeeze out as much water as I can get out of this jackfruit. And no need to separate the seeds. We're gonna cook the seeds in it and everything. Because I think I forgot to tell you guys what I'm making. Oh my gosh, I'm making barbecue jackfruit sliders. But we're just gonna kind of put them in a bun because I kind of wasn't able to get the slider bun. So we're just gonna put them in a bun. But this is barbecue jackfruit that we're making. How could I forget to tell you guys what I was making? I tell you, crazy Michelle, crazy Michelle. I've been just jumping in the kitchen and just starting to cook. So I'm just using my hands, as you can see, I'm squeezing out as much water as I can, and I'm just kind of breaking that jackfruit up, kind of like just shredded chicken or pulled pork, whatever you want to call it. See, looks like starting to look like chicken pieces, right? And like I said, don't get rid of the seeds. The seeds are fine. Once it's cooked, you're not gonna taste or feel the texture of the seeds of, at all. Now we have the jackfruit drained, shredded, our onions chopped. Let's head to the other side. Let's go. On the stove, I have a skillet already. I also added oil to the pan. So all we're gonna do is add our jackfruit. Let's get this out of the way. Add our onions, all of it in there. Grab a spoon, come on in so you can see what this looks like. And that's what it looks like. We're gonna allow the jackfruit to get nice and brown. So we're gonna allow the onions to cook, become caramelized, and we're also gonna allow that jackfruit to brown up a bit. All right, guys, come on in. Let me show you what's going on. So the onions have started to caramelize. The jackfruit started to get brown. This is when you want to season it. The jackfruit is open and ready and porous, and now is when it needs its seasoning. Simple seasoning. We're just going to use My Vegan Kitchen Life all-purpose seasoning. You can purchase this on my website. I'll leave the link below. We're just going to season it up generously. Let me get enough in there. Come on in so you can see. 
And this season has everything. So it has your paprika, it has salt, it has black pepper, it has everything in it so you don't have to worry that you need another seasoning at all. Mix that all together, make sure it's completely combined and continue to brown your jackfruit. Just a little bit more, give it maybe two more minutes. So I gave the jackfruit about two to three minutes after I seasoned it to really get the flavors. And you may say, Michelle, why do you need to cook it on the stove, season it, we're gonna place it in this dish and then put it in the oven? That's because on the stove, it opens up the flavor of the jackfruit so you can really get the seasoning inside of it. So when you, we put it in the oven, it doesn't have the opportunity to do it. So that's why I do it that way. I just find that it comes out a whole lot better. All right, now that we gave it that couple of minutes, ooh, you saw that, I almost burnt myself. I'm gonna get an oven safe dish. I'm gonna place my jackfruit ugh, right into that dish. Thank God this is a no stick pot because everything just slides right off. That is my caraway non-stick, non-toxic pot. Uh, the link is in the, in the description box. So if you guys wanna buy it, there's a discount link right in the description box. I'm gonna just spread out my jackfruit right in the bake container. Grab myself some barbecue sauce. You can use any barbecue sauce you want. Choose your favorite. And we're gonna lather it up. Come on in. I make sure I'm getting barbecue sauce, generous amount of barbecue sauce all over it. We're gonna place this in the oven because what we want the barbecue sauce to do is to become caramelized. We're trying to get rid of as much liquid as possible and really caramelize the barbecue sauce. It gets in the jackfruit, so when we get it on that bread, it's nice and firm and it will stay on the bread. It won't be like watery and slide everywhere. All right, let's pop this in the oven. The oven is on 400. We're gonna leave it in here for, mm, let me put it in and then I'll give you, I'll leave the, the time right on the bottom. So let me just pop this in the oven. This way, I'll be able to give you the exact time that I place it in here, okay? It's about 20 minutes, but let me make sure. Let's start that up and let it cook. All right, guys, our 20 minutes is up and it looks good. A little hot in here, so give me a minute. Look at that, Woo! it is good. Don't that look like some ribs? <laughs> let me flip this around, because this is really hot. All you're gonna do now is just take a spoon and just blend it all together. But come on in, because I really want you to see this. You see how this got nice and like charred on the edges? You want it to be like that because that means it's not gonna be too soggy when you mix it all up and it has caramelized and all the flavor is in your jackfruit right now. So let's get that all combined. Wonderful, and then we're gonna plate this up, guys. All right, guys, so we're plating this up. I got some french fries on here, well, sweet potato fries, and all I did was season them up with my all-purpose seasoning, added a little grapeseed oil and some um, nutritional yeast, placed it in the oven, and just let it bake up. They're so delicious. I'll leave the ingredients down on the bottom. I got my bun. I wanted sliders, like I said, but they, the store didn't have any sliders, so I just got these like gluten-free bun. And I'm gonna also add on my plate, I made this um, side salad, and all it is is cabbage, um, vinegar, again, I'll leave the recipe, some cucumbers, some sesame oil, and we're just gonna place that right on the side right here, because you gotta have some vegetables. You know, yeah, the jackfruit is a vegetable or a fruit, but you gotta have some, you gotta have some vegetables. Look how pretty that plate is. And now we're gonna add our jackfruit to our bun. All right, let's get that first pile on. This is still a little bit hot, but look how good that looks. You see how firm it is? A lot of times the jackfruit, when you know they have it pre-made, it's usually like mushy and watery. This is nice and firm. This will really taste like, I got a little choked up there, like chicken, like you use the real white meat chicken on this bun. Let's top this off. Get the top on, look at that, y'all, look at that. That looks good. 
and I'm gonna taste it for you guys. So you see, I got my slaw, my cabbage slaw right there. I got my sweet potato fries. Let's take a bite into this. Look at that, that looks so good. All right, see, I gave it time to cool down, guys. That's what all that talking was about. Here we go. Mmm. Mmm. What I tell you, see all this food on my mouth? Give me a second. Barbecue jackfruit sliders or buns or whatever you want to call it, never disappoints. It's always good, always. Mm. Let's taste these fries. Mm. Fries are amazing. And let's grab a little bit of slaw. Now that's a meal right there. There you go, guys. Barbecue jackfruit. Easy. How easy was that? On to the next. All right, so now that we're done with the first recipe, Let's jump into the second. This one, I don't really have a formal name for it. It's jackfruit stuffed into a pita pocket, seasoned really well, and it's just so good. So let's get started. Let me bust this can open and let's show you what to do. Just rinse it on the really hot water. I use my hands and just shred it down and this is what we have left. So we're just gonna place that on the side. On the stove, I have a skillet going, heating up with some oil. So I have that starting to heat up. While that heats up, I'm gonna prepare my other ingredients. I'm gonna use half of an onion, and I'm just gonna chop that onion, peel and chop my onion, and then I'm gonna peel and dice a russet potato. But you could use any potato. I like russet potato because it cooks up a little softer, so when it gets in the pita pocket, it's you don't have like really dense pieces. It kind of just kind of melts together. So let me prepare that and then we're going to head over to the pot. All right. So now that we have everything diced and chopped, let's head on over. All right, let's go. All right. We're going to first add in our jackfruit just like that. Let me grab a spoon so I could get all my jackfruit out of the strainer. And then I'm going to add in the potatoes and the onion. Guys, I diced these potatoes really, really fine, like really thin. We want them to be able to cook really quick, but we're adding potatoes to this base because we want it to be hearty. This is gonna be a dinner type of meal, so you wanna make sure that you have enough um, base inside of that, that pita pocket. Also, you can add mushrooms if you want. If you wanna really like chunk it up, you can add mushrooms. But for this recipe, I'm only gonna add the potatoes. Now we're gonna stir that up in the pot and allow this to brown up a little bit before we add the rest of the ingredients. I'm probably going to give it about maybe five to seven minutes to kind of, you know, melt together, get the potatoes softened up and brown a little bit. All right, guys, come on in so you could take a look. So I gave it a good maybe five to seven minutes to cook. And you know when it's cooked, when the potatoes are tender, like when you taste them, they're just easy to bite into and you know they're cooked. And you notice the jackfruit have browned up somewhat. So now we're gonna season it. I'm gonna start by adding some black pepper. I'm gonna get some flavor in there. So I'm just using some real ground black pepper. I'm gonna add some diced green pepper. And the reason I add it now and not before for me personally, I'm not sure how you guys are, how you are with your vegetables, but I like when peppers like red bell peppers, green peppers, yellow peppers, they still have some firmness to them when you bite into whatever it is that you're eating. You still wanna have the flavor, you don't wanna completely cook it out. So I add that in now. Then I'm gonna add some Parmesan cheese. I know, where is Michelle going with this? Let me tell you, these flavors together are really good though. This is vegan Parmesan cheese. I get this one from Trader Joe's, but almost every grocery store carries a really good vegan cheese these days. You don't have to worry anymore that it's so nasty. And I'm just gonna blend that in and allow it just to kind of melt in with the jackfruit just a little bit before I add my favorite Korean barbecue sauce. And add as much or as little cheese as you would want in this dish. I would say uh, the cheese add the flavor, so go ahead and add it in. 
And then let's get some Korean barbecue sauce in here. And that's where you're really getting the flavor and the seasoning from. Remember, we only added black pepper. I would probably say I add a little less than a quarter cup of um, um, Korean barbecue sauce because you guys are always asking. But, you know, it's kind of personal preference. If you like stuff, you know, really saucy, add more. If you like it less saucy, add less. I like it saucy and flavorful, so I like to add that much to it. Come on in so you can see this is what it looks like. Now I'm going to give it a couple of minutes to really cook and kind of firm up a little bit before I place it into the pita pot. All right, guys. So now that this is done, I'm just going to move it and allow it just to cool down a little bit. While it's cooling down, I'm going to grab my cast iron pan and I'm going to start to heat that up. I'm going to head over here. We're using regular pita pocket, guys. Or pita. Once we cut it open, let me grab my knife. We're just going to cut these in half. So just use a nice big sharp knife and cut it in half. Once we cut it in half, we're just going to open up that pocket gently. And that's where we're going to place our filling. All right, okay. here we go. We're going to stuff our pita pockets. Let's get right in here. I'm using a smaller spoon, as you can see, so we could get right in there. Let me tell you guys, this filling is so good. It tastes good just like this. You could probably put this on some rice or just right between some bread and have it just like that. But I'm going to show you just a better way to have it or a different, you know, something just a little bit more interesting. Sometimes you get bored of your usual recipes. And this is just a little bit more interesting. Guys, I was able to stuff four of them. Let me tell you, through this whole thing, I'm eating the filling. It's so good. By itself? Oh, my God. Let's go. All right. So my pan is nice and hot. You're going to take your pita pocket, place it right in the pan. Take your pita pocket, place it right in the pan. And we're just going to get the bread seared on both sides. That's it. Once it heats through, that crust is going to be, oh, my God, so good. Right, guys, and just like that, that's what it looks like. So what we've done is create this nice crust on the outside. I did have a little bit of oil in my pan. You can add oil or butter. Just depends on how savory you want these to be. I used a cast iron because I didn't really want to add um, much oil or butter to my pan. Just like that, guys, our stuffed jackfruit pita pockets are done. These are so tasty. They're addictive. You're going to be eating these just over and over and over again. They're filling, they're really great. Kids love them, everybody loves them. When I make these, everybody, people who think they didn't like jackfruit end up loving jackfruit after this. But let me take a bite. Oh my God. I don't even know how to explain it. So the outer is nice and toasted, nice and warm and toasty. The inside, the flavor is unbelievable. It's cheesy, it's meaty, it's flavorful. Oh, it's so good. You guys got to try this. Stuffed jackfruit pita pockets. On to the next recipe. Guys, here we go. Recipe number three. Number three, this is one of my top rated recipes. You guys showed out and you guys really love this recipe. So I thought it was just fitting to put old Jack right in this group of three. Jack is back, guys. This is jerk jackfruit. And this is so good. So I already went ahead and I removed the jackfruit from the can, removed the water, and I allowed the jackfruit to sit in hot, just hot tap water for like 10 minutes. Even though I said that this... Um, Jackfruit comes in like a lime water uh, type brine. And I don't want to call it brine because brine is like has a weird taste. You still want to soak it a little bit just to really get out that like canned taste. Once I soaked it, I wrapped it in just a kitchen towel to really get out the water. Now, let me come in so I can show you guys. When I wrapped it in my kitchen towel, I tried not to disturb the shape of the jackfruit at all. And this is nice and dry. So I had it really sit in my towel for maybe like five to 10 minutes just to really get the water out. 
I grabbed two bowls. This is gonna be a wet and dry batter type of recipe. Now, if you've been watching my videos, you know I hate the wet dry batter, but this right here, I will take the time and do the wet dry batter because it's, it makes it all so good. All right, so I got flour, even amounts of flour in both bowls. I seasoned with all purpose all-purpose seasoning and just a little bit more garlic. Again, I don't want any jackfruit briny taste at all, so I made sure I seasoned my, um, my, my flour really well. And don't worry, guys, I will have a list of all the ingredients that I use in the description box. All right, now that we have those two together, I'm going to grab a little bit of water and we're going to obviously wet one of these batters, right? We're going to turn this batter into a nice creamy more liquid batter and we're trying to get the texture of kind of like a little bit of a runny pancake batter if that makes sense because we don't really want a really thick crust but we just want it to be able to really coat that jackfruit once i get the liquid batter nice and combined the second dry batter we're just going to make sure that all the seasoning is mixed in well so just make sure you just mix it up combine it all so it's all combined really well. We're just gonna take our jackfruit pieces and just place it in the bowl that we had right here. All right, let's get rid of that. And then we're gonna season it with liquid aminos. The reason why I'm using a liquid seasoning instead of um, like dry salt is because I wanna make sure that I get the seasoning inside all of those little nooks and crannies. I'm just gonna get it on all, and you don't have to use too much. Liquid aminos is very salty, so we don't wanna get too much of it there. All right, so now that our jackfruit has the seasoning, and it's like a sponge, so it's just soaking up that uh, liquid aminos, we're ready to go. We're gonna grab all of our, our items, all right? Let me try to juggle this, and we're gonna head over to the other side. On the other side, I have my cast iron skillet with some grapeseed oil and it's heating up so it should be nice and hot now. All right, let's grab this and head to the other side. All right, guys, we're gonna start to batter these up. Now I do have this video, like I said earlier, um, already posted. So if you really want the real in-depth step-by-step, I'll link that, that video right below so you guys can see it. Cause I'm gonna do the easy way out. In that video, I did these individually. In this video, we're just gonna dump it all in. So I'm just going to go ahead and put my jackfruit right in. Ain't nobody got time for that. You know, sometimes when you do something and you look back, you're like, mm, I could have done it differently. And there really, honestly, there's no need to put this in individually. We're really just trying to coat this up. So let's get it all coated up. It's not like we're not going to be able to find it inside of this bowl. It is obvious. The pieces are there. All right, so cameraman, thank you for coming in so they could see exactly what I'm doing. I'm just coating my jackfruit with the batter, with the wet batter. And then we're gonna dunk it into the dry batter and then fry it up in some oil. All right, once I get the, the batter on there, you see it, it looks like this. All right, we're just gonna place it right in the hot oil and that oil is ready. That's it. You know what, we ain't even gonna use this anymore. We're just gonna use my hands. For those who don't like seeing me use my hands, I am sorry, but this is just the fastest way for me to cook. You don't have to do it this way because I don't want you guys to burn yourselves, but look how much faster I'm moving with this. Ain't nobody, again, got no time for no tongs. This is the way I learned how to cook. You just throw it in. Use your hands, baby, use your hands. All right, guys, come on in. Come on in and take a look. All right, look at my jackfruit pieces. They're beautiful, they're absolutely beautiful. Now, you know, these are well seasoned guys, so you can eat them honestly just like this. I had a couple of subscribers ask me to create um, like chicken nuggets, like, you know, I, I hate saying chicken, but you know, like nuggets. This would be the perfect type of chicken nuggets because when you break it open, it literally looks like chicken. It's crazy. But these are done. As you can see, you just fry them up till they're golden brown like me. And then you place them right in a bowl. Easy enough, right? Doesn't take a lot of work at all. A lot of thought, a lot of seasoning, a lot of process. Really super easy. I tell you, the hardest part is those two batters. But you see how quickly, use your hands. It makes the time go quicker. Place them in a bowl just like this 
to give you a little bit of free will. And I know for some of you guys, you hate that because you want specific recipes, but this is where you could play around with it a little bit. I have some Korean barbecue sauce in a bowl. I'm going to add some barbecue sauce. Choose your type of barbecue sauce. You could use the same one that you use for the sliders. You can use another type. You can buy, um, if you'd like something just a little bit not as sweet in a barbecue sauce, make it your own. And I'm going to use my, um, my vegan kick kitchen jerk seasoning in this. So this is what's going to give it that jerk flavor and that kick that you need. Go ahead and season it up. Again, if you don't like it too spicy, don't add a lot. If you like your food spicy, go ahead, add it in. Stir it up. Taste it. All right, let's taste this and see. Oh, that's good. That's good. All right. Once you mix that up, and I know you're sitting there like, she's not just going to pour it on there and that's it. And me no, I'm going to say this in a Jamaican, me no say I know real jerk chicken this. But this is how I do it. All right. This is the easy way. This is the easy way to do it. It got jerk seasoning in it. So we're going to call it jerk. Okay. Don't come for me, Jamaicans. Don't come for me. All right. Once you put it in there, mix them babies up, get them all saturated with the juice, with that sauce. And just like that, you got yourself some jerk jackfruit pieces. Just like that. Yes, baby. Jack is back and he's doing it. All right. We're going to taste it. It's a little hot. So I'm going to give it like a minute just to kind of cool down. You see the steam coming out of it? Give it just a minute or so just to cool down. And I'm going to taste it for you guys. I'm going to break it open. So all you naysayers, you're going to see it look just like chicken. It looks just like chicken pieces. All right, guys. So it's cooled down. And <laughs> I'm not going to lie to you. So while it was cooling down, there's quite a few people in this room. I know you guys can't see them. But when I tell you everybody wanted to taste this and everybody loved it and no one can ever understand how it tastes like chicken. It's, it's really crazy, really crazy. But let me dig in. I want to show you guys what it looks like just for those of you who've never really seen it. Let me grab it. Even feel like there's a bone in the middle. It's absolutely nuts. All right. So let's get in here. I'm going to break it open so you guys can see. And that's what it looks like on the inside. It looks like chicken. See, it looks like chicken fibers. Crazy, right? All right, let me taste it. Never cease to amaze me. This is so darn good. Oh, my God. So good. Let me taste one more bite, all right? Mm. So all you guys are making that want to come for me, once you make this, you're going to be like, Michelle, you're right. You don't have to do all the jerk business. And this tastes just like it. Me and Jack. Mm -hmm. All right. So let's recap what we did. The three recipes. We have the barbecue uh, jackfruit sandwich. Because remember, I had the slider bun. So we put it on a sandwich. But you could do it any way you want. You could do it as sliders also. And then the second recipe. Oh, my God. That was good. That was the, the jackfruit stuffed in the pita pocket. Oh, my gosh. And now... We have the jerk jackfruit. Guys, when I tell you this video is epic, all three of these recipes are really good. It's like having that perfect album, you know, where every song is just right. You don't have to skip any one of them. That's it right here. Guys, thank you for joining me in my vegan kitchen. I get so excited with these recipes, especially this one. You got to try each and every one. Make jackfruit your friend. Jack is back, guys. Check you on the next video. See you guys next week. Bye, guys.